Thank you for joining us in our virtual staff room on this Merlin Mind Monday. Really pleased to see you all here. Hopefully more people will, like, will arrive as we go on. And I'm going to hand over to my great and good friend, Ian, who's going to be the host for today's session. Over to you, Ian. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Paul, and uh, welcome everybody to Paul. Uh, to what Paul has said is the first of uh, two uh, of our uh, Merlin Mine Mondays. Um, in these uh, two uh, sessions, uh, we're going to be sharing um, experiences uh, from uh, from teachers in in schools and colleges, and I hope in the future, um, sort of even universities, um, not just in the UK. Uh, but uh, from uh, from the USA, um, who have been uh, using uh, Merlin Mind, and uh, I may even ask that we, we talk uh, Merlin Mind, and then we talk uh, Symphony Classroom. I'm sure at some point uh, you can explain to us um, whether we should be uh, just using the Merlin word all all the time. And you can tell that uh, I have my unit switched off so that it's not going to keep on answering answering back. Um, and then, of course, answering any questions that uh, the people have got. Um, today, it, we've got some very special uh, guests. Uh, so it's my uh, pleasure, as always, uh, to introduce uh, Jason Malin uh, from uh, Merlin Mind in, in the USA. Uh, uh, Jason has been working with us for uh, almost a year now on many of the, the, the sort of pilot uh, trials um, and it was a pleasure uh, to have uh, Jason over here in the UK over the last uh, last month and Zach uh, a very warm uh, welcome uh, to you in your uh, new role I guess you're one of the the latest uh, joinees for uh, for Merlin Mind and and uh, I'll come back to you in a minute so you can explain uh, your uh, amazing role and uh, and how you're going to be supporting everyone. Of course, uh, Maria, it would never be uh, a, a, a amazing uh, Monday if uh, if you weren't uh, on on the call. So thank you very much for uh, uh, for joining us. Uh, I know that uh, Gary um, Spracklin and uh, Alicia from the Prince of Wales School uh, were hoping to join us, but uh, if you've seen uh, Gary's uh, social media, uh, they've got this huge, I mean huge, it's bigger than the school, Christmas tree um, outside the front door, um, and uh, he has got turned, transformed the whole school into uh, an amazing wonderland for all the students so he's a bit busy um sort of uh, being uh, being there but uh, no it's uh, it's great that everybody is um, is with us so zach why don't we uh, sort of uh, start with uh, with with you um so welcome to the to the the meeting can you um, explain to us your role in merlin mind uh, what that encompasses and perhaps just a, a little bit of background about yourself so yeah definitely and thank you ian for the for the introduction and for inviting me uh to your to your merlin mind monday um so just a little bit about me i'm actually a former classroom teacher i taught high school chemistry uh for a few years um and fell in love with with ed tech and using technology in the classroom and that's what actually brought me to uh this change in my career where i've been working in ed education technology space for the last 10 years um mm -hmm. primarily supporting teachers and advocating teachers. And I'm, I'm very new to the Merlin Mind team. And, uh, and my goal, my role is to make sure that what we're doing at Merlin Mind is, are, are things that are, are teacher focused and that teachers are excited about and that will make a teacher's life easy, easier. Um, I'll also be creating online community spaces for teachers, making sure teachers can connect, connect with other teachers, not only within their school, but throughout the world, being able to share tips and ideas um, and also uh, creating different support channels and making sure teachers have all the resources and tools they need to be successful. Yeah, no, that that's uh, that's great, Zach. And uh, which part of the uh, the USA are you based in? And also, uh, uh, which uh, levels of um, uh, US education were you uh, previously uh, in? Yeah, so I'm based uh, just outside of Washington D.C. Um, and I. Um, I received my master's in education um, um, after receiving my bachelor's degree um, in science. Okay, no, no, that, that's uh, that's great. Th so, thank you for that. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be <clears throat> we're picking up on on many more of the things that you've uh, you've said there. So, uh, Maria, um, <clears throat> uh, welcome uh, to the uh, sort of uh, Merlin Mind Monday uh, session, um, and. Um, 
it's always uh, great, as I say, to have you on 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 the call. So, do you want to just uh, for the the benefits of some of the the people who are uh, who haven't uh, had an opportunity to hear you, uh, just uh, uh, sort of who you are, where you are, and uh, your um, experience at the moment using uh, using Merlin Mind. Yeah, of course. So I'm Maria. I am the curriculum lead for health and social care in Colleague Cambria. I'm based in Wrexham, but we have seven different sites across North Wales. Um, so yeah, I teach health and social care at the moment. I was also a primary school teacher in a, in another life, so I've kind of taught across the age ranges, anything from nursery right through to um, people getting close to retirement age. Actually, so yeah, I've taught everything. Uh, so with Merlin, for me, I love it. <laughs> I've, got, I've said it before. I say it again. You know, um, I find it so useful in my lesson. It's it's been a bit of a godsend. Um, especially for us, you know, we, we have to differentiate lessons in college, obviously, because they're not put in um, ability groups. So everybody is classed as, as one. So if, you know, there's a learner struggling or anything like that, and I'm helping another learner, I tell them to ask Merlin, and it comes up on the screen for everybody. So it's it's just been great and for loads of different things. Yeah, no, that that's, that's great. And we, obviously, we've, we've had uh, a sort of longer... Um, sort of conversation uh, with you uh, back in uh, in in September, uh, but for uh, for for people um, sort of again um, sort of uh, new to, uh, to to Merlin Mind um, in a normal um, lesson uh, where you're um, sort of walking into uh, into the the classroom uh, in um, in in Yale there at, uh, at the campus, um, then uh, what are the sort of applications? that uh, you're using and and also how does it save you time in the, in the delivery of the, the lessons uh, as as well as the impact on the students maria i think for me it's i'm uh, i like to move around the classroom i don't like to stand at the front i think that's a bit old school to stand at the front so i'm always pottering about and obviously every student has their own chromebook so i like to see what they're doing on their chromebook as well so i'm better off kind of floating so I can use and now now that I've when I met with Francesca, obviously the air mouse has become my new friend. And um, so I use the air mouse. I use it to scroll through my presentation slides. It moves my slides on and back for me. Um, any YouTube videos, if I'm not standing next to the computer, I can pause or I can skip forward or rewind. Uh, it just saves time in that way. I can open things from my drive while I'm moving around as well. I can get Merlin to do that for me. I don't have to be chained to my desk or my laptop or my PC in order to teach. Now I can be around the room. Yeah, so it's, it's safe to do it that way, you know. And, and the learners love playing with Merlin, and I think it's because they have become so used to voice-activated type software things in, in their everyday life that it is now second nature to ask Merlin if if I'm busy. Yeah, no, I mean the, the, these are, these are great insights as always, uh, Maria. Um, one of the things that uh, you shared with me when we last talked was of course sometimes students are a, a little shy um, and to ask them to come up to the front of the classroom even though it's only a few paces sometimes it feels like there's a chasm <laughs> in front of the uh, in front of the class so so how is Merlin Mind helping overcome those shy uh, students in your class? Um, I think it's usually there's always one that is a bit more outspoken that will do the, the, the kind of the talking for them to get Merlin to do it. And then the others are kind of clocking that and thinking, well, actually, I want to have a go of Merlin. So they will start to ask more questions so that they can have a go. And um, we are looking at um, trying to hook Merlin up with a Chromecast as well so that students will be able to present from their desk and their slides and things will be on the screen. That's our next step with Merlin. Yeah, no, that that's uh, that, that's great. Thank you for that. And by the way, uh, to everybody on the on the call, and welcome, uh, AJ. Uh, thanks for, uh, for for joining in. Uh, if you have questions uh, or comments, and especially um, Zach and Jason and and, and Paul, uh, please just uh, sort of uh, jump in and, uh, and and comment. So, so Zach, one of the the things that I know that you're uh, looking. Uh, to gather as the, the days and weeks and months uh, go forward are some of the uh, the insights uh, from uh, teachers uh, using thing. Have you got any um, sort of um, uh, comments back on um, the experiences that Maria's shared? Yeah, 
Thanks, Maria. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. It's it's really awesome to hear what, what Merlin is doing with with everyone in your classroom and and how you're using it. And I guess kind of to flip it around, like what is something you want Merlin to be doing right now that that Merlin can't do, and that would make your life in the classroom be so much better? I think I I think I mentioned it last time I spoke with Ian. I think the only thing that would make things easier for me would be that. Um, Merlin is able to interact with more websites that I would use. And I know that when Francesca was here, she did ask me to make a list and I'm still compiling this list of the, the <laughs> regular websites. It's, it will be probably like a magnum opus that I need to hand up would be huge. But um, yeah, I think if it would, if, if I could get it to interact with more um, of the websites that I use, you know, um, over time, things like editing different video software and things, or getting it to make a clip of a, of a, a documentary or something then it would just be, I mean, it's brilliant anyway, but it would just be kind of the yeah. cherry on the top. And if you had this, like, I know there's probably a lot of websites, but like, if you have one website yeah, top of mind, like, top of mind. sorry to put you on the spot, like, what would that website be? Oh, there's a video one I use. It's fantastic. It's um, it's called B.O.B. or Bob Learning on Screen. And it's just, it's got every single documentary, radio show, everything you could ever want. And you can make clips on there, but I can never quite get the timing quite right. And I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So because I'm three or four seconds out each time, it annoys me. <laughs> and I think if I could get Merlin to do it, Merlin would be more precise than I am, trying to do the slider. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. No, that, that that's uh, that's great, uh, Maria. And um, for for everybody uh, on on the call, then uh, Maria is uh, one of is it five teachers, uh, Maria in the in the department, uh, and uh, Colleg Cambria, uh, a large um, sort of uh, FE uh, college group up in the North Wales. Uh, they currently have uh, five Merlin Mind uh, units, which uh, are being used across the. Uh, um, the child and, and social care and healthcare um, sort of uh, department. Um, so uh, thank you, Faria. We'll come back, come back, uh, and uh, and sure we'll uh, we'll have more of these uh, these conversations. So Jason, um, you obviously had the opportunity not only to um, visit um, sort of um, Maria um, in and the, the team up in North Wales, but also uh, Gary Spracklin and Alicia. Um, in um, Jason's left, <laughs> I'm sure uh, he was he was intending to uh, <coughs> to come back. He will be in in a minute. Uh, but uh, we uh, we had um, visits to um, uh, sort of the Prince of Wales School, uh, which is um, a, a completely the other end of the age uh, spectrum. Um, so they're a first school in uh, in uh, Dorchester. Um, and they have Merlin five Merlin mines in their uh, school, uh, one in every classroom, uh, from nursery um, uh, right through to um, uh, sort of uh, I think it's uh, is is the first school Paul year year four year three uh, it, it's uh, seven or eight year olds, um, and and Maria I know as a, as a former primary school uh, teacher you you can imagine messy play. Uh, that goes on in uh, in in those sorts of uh, classrooms, and yet um, sort of uh, Merlin Mind uh, is uh, is working remarkably uh, uh, well. And I remember uh, Alicia, the the Year One uh, teacher. It was almost um, sort of when the um, the children came in from uh, playground, and they're you know they're they're hyper. Uh, as as we want them to be, all be excited and whatever else, um, putting a fifteen second timer uh, on the screen, and then it was the music, that the chimes, uh, the end, the fifteen seconds, that suddenly they all be going Ooh, <laughs> and just quietening down if if by uh, by magic. So uh, there's um, there's lots uh, to be shared, and the reason um, that I, um, I I I bring this, whether it's um, nursery age uh, children and, and teachers or adult learners, um, then certainly uh, here in the UK, uh, Zach and, uh, and Jason, we've seen uh, Merlin Mind um, sort of reaching out uh, across uh, the, the age ranges. Um, and uh, in Clare's Court, which is um, an independent school in Maidenhead, and AJ, if you uh, ever want to be able to go across uh, for a quick uh, visit, then uh, James Wilding, who's the academic principal, is always open 
to, uh, to to school visits, although you have to check these days with, with COVID and everything else. Uh, but in normal circumstances, um, he, he, he runs a, an open house and is very happy for uh, people to visit him. But in, uh, in their um, um, sort of school, they have Merle in mind, both uh, in the girls' um, um, school, the boys' senior school, but also in the um, sort of uh, uh, prep uh, school under 11s. Um, and one of the things that we found in uh, Claire's Court is um, uh, Tom Agar, who's their uh, science teacher, um, Zach is um, an amazing uh, Paralympian, but he's a wheelchair-bound teacher. Um, so as he goes around the uh, science lab, being able to just use his voice uh, to uh, maintain control of the resources in the classroom, I think is is really important. And whether it's um, teachers with disabilities or students with disabilities, uh, then uh, I think this opens up a whole avenue of accessibility uh, that is really important. So, Jason, if you're uh, back on the, the call, I was just going to uh, ask you uh, to share um, um, some of your uh, experiences from visits to uh, U.S. Uh, schools. Sure, Ian, thank you for that. Um, you know, we found that the Merlin works equally well, whether it's a university setting where you have a large number of you know, guest lecturers that don't want to mess around with how to... Uh, you know, how to actually just, you know, connect their computer to the screen. We find it works extremely well with primary schools. Um, we've done a lot of work in uh, the elementary space. You know, we call it, we call it that here, what uh, you would call primary school, where students will actually speak to the device and teachers will control it with, with the remote and improves classroom engagement. So, um, you know, I'll stop there, but if you have some more specific questions, Ian, I'd be happy to speak to it. Yeah, no, it, it was just, um, I know that there have been some really uh, positive um, sort of uh, responses from Phil and his team over at uh, Malverde District. Um, and uh, I just wondered, obviously, it's, a, it, it's even, if it was um, five hours uh, difference uh, for Zach to get up at 7 a.m. in the morning, uh, then uh, Phil in Valverde, I think he'd be getting up at uh, sort of 4 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, uh, but, you know, I think, you know, as uh, gracious as Phil is, that may be the bridge too far. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Valverde experience, though. So there, what, what they really did, which was really innovative, was they used the switching capability to integrate visualizers um, with, a, with the Merlin in a hybrid setting. So there was a second grade teacher there who was, who was doing math, math um, work with students and was able to have the students ask, Ask Merlin the answer, and then would switch over to show the answer manually on a, on a visualizer, and it just created a much a much more uh, seamless and uh, interactive experience. And that's just one. We've done a lot with um, individuals with um, disabilities. We we've done a lot with dictation. Um, what what we find in is that teachers are far more innovative than uh, we ever could be, and they find new ways to use the product and new ways to use the technology to improve teaching and learning. In classroom management, and classroom orchestration, we can't even envision. So yeah. that's why the pilots are, you know, so so important. No, that, that that's great. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Jason and and Paul. Um, we were having um, this uh, conversation early this morning because, as a former um, sort of primary school uh, uh, teacher um, at um, sort of Dixie Grammar School and all the uh, the sort of other um, sort of places that you've uh, you've taught. Um, you know, and also um, sharing uh, your uh, thoughts from the recent independent schools uh, conference, uh, where um, the head uh, from Homegrange, uh, AJ, obviously saw uh, sort of Merlin Mind. Um, if you'd had Merlin Mind in your class, uh, sort of uh, in uh, in the in those days, how how would you have uh, used it to the benefit of yourself and your uh, students? Thank you, Ian. Um I remember, I'm just going to take you back just a little while, um, because there was a significant point in my teaching, and it's chimed with things that people have said today that, that Maria has said and so on and so forth. Um, when it dawned on me, I didn't have to be at the front of the class. My first school, I was in my first school just for two years, 
and um, never felt quite comfortable there because it was an incredibly traditional school and more or less every single teacher was stuck behind their desk at the front of the room this was even before there were computers and it never felt quite right for me to be there and I always struggle with this notion of that's because I would look around as a brand new teacher, what we call an early careers teacher now, and see, you know, my models from other staff and think, well, actually, this is not how it, it didn't feel right. Moved to a new school, suddenly realised that not everyone was doing that. We breathed a sigh of relief and got out from behind my desk and started to get back into the thick of the classroom. And Maria's smiling. She knows the minute you're in the classroom, the dynamic changes. It's a very different place to be. And now we add in computers and all of a sudden there's now a pull back to the front. And actually that's a real challenge for teachers. And Francesca was sharing with us, Francesca from Merlin Mind was sharing with us, there's a lot of evidence from America now saying that post COVID, teachers have picked up a lot of technology, but that is locking them back to the computer at the front of the room again. So there's another real challenge there that we don't want that to happen because as you know, Maria's smile tells you, when you're in the thick of the action, it's a much more dynamic place to be. And all those things like behavioural control, just simply being close to someone can often stop them talking because they feel your presence. And it's a very different, dynamic, exciting place. So that being said, once I realised that, you put in computers, because now we've gone to computers, and you put in Merlin Mind, and I'm in an environment where I've, the need to go back to the front of the classroom has been taken away because I can be in the thick of the classroom. And, and I would use it in, in very similar ways to Maria. Yeah, lots of my um, lessons were driven through um, slides. So they would be managed through slides and I can manage that without being away. If you get those killer questions from that student that says, so, well, what is the difference between an appoggiatura and an akiakatura? I said, well, well, let's ask Merlin. So that question comes up and the definition's there. So that student that's got that extra level of challenge is now dealing with that reading the definition carrying on with the work whilst i'm in the thick of it still working with other students in the in the in the in the classroom which is really exciting as an ex-music teacher the other thing that i would use a lot which is strange to say is the mute button because what you get in youtube are brilliant you get youtube videos that show the score as the music plays so the option to mute it and to meet and narrate so look here we go we're about to arrive at theme two stop pause video can you see theme two so they wouldn't hear the music they'd see the score because it would also have the score on their desk so as it sounds like an odd thing to say but as a music yeah, i would use that a great deal no. the other, i would use it for one sorry Ian, you, you did ask one more thing is that the, in the cut and thrust of a lesson you will get that question so how do we do that or do you remember that worksheet last last week so can i have a copy i said to the to say to merlin okay merlin go and find my slide my worksheet about Akiakatura or whatever it happens to be and that then is on the screen for that student to see and read whilst I'm dealing with other students. It allows me to do that thing that Maria mentioned earlier as well, which is differentiation. Students got the answer to their question, they're able to proceed, work in their own way, become independent learners whilst I'm in the thick of it helping other people. So that's kind of where it would sit for me within my classroom were I still there. It makes me miss the classroom because it's such a important <laughs> No, I'm, I'm sure, especially at this time of the year, uh, Paul, it, uh, it it definitely does. <clears throat> so, uh, so AJ, uh, I'm I'm conscious of that um, you've been uh, uh, listening uh, to uh, uh, Maria and and Paul and and Zach and, uh, and others talking about Merlin Mind, uh, but um, I've just realised uh, that we haven't really, for uh, the benefit of people who perhaps haven't had a chance. Uh, to go to the uh, Merlin Mind uh, uh, website. And Owen, can you just pop it into the uh, chat? Um, could um, uh, Jason or Zach uh, just uh, quickly um, sort of um, give a, a, a summary of, of what Merlin Mind actually uh, is? Yeah, Ian, um, I'll, speak, I'll speak to that. So Merlin Mind is an infrastructural AI appliance, and really, and really, all that means it's a piece of hardware that you know we install. We connect it to your computer. Jason, with sorry, Jason, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm, I can hear everyone else very clearly. But you seem to be quite distant. Um, is this is this better? Yep. Yes, thank you. Sure. Sorry about that. Yeah. So it's um, essentially it's a it's a hardware appliance with a software, right? So. Uh, we plug your computer into it, and essentially what we allow you to do is you can control your entire Google Suite by voice or with the interactive remote. It allows you to open slides, advanced slides, set a set timers, 
search, a search Google, control media, uh, control your Google Drive and a variety of other things. And as Paul has said, and you know, Maria has said, it liberates you to be anywhere inside the room versus being stuck at the front. And uh, we think probably it's one of the most innovative things since the introduction of the computer. And I'll say from a different point of view, I really believe this product helps to democratize technology. And the reason I say that is, as Paul mentioned, and my colleague Francesca says a lot, teachers have been overwhelmed with myriad technology. And the question is, how do you manage it? And when you make the management tool your voice, uh, that makes it so much easier to get the most out of the technology you have and to leverage technology for the benefit of students and learning without without being subsumed by it. So that, in a, in a nutshell, is really what uh, you know, Merlin Mind is. And does it only just work with a Google suite or does it work with, um, would it work with teachers that say they've got um, their files or presentations within their um, local network or does it only scan Google? Yeah, so you know, right now this is a Google primary product. Now there is a Microsoft roadmap, but it's a Google primary product. Now that does not mean that you're tethered to a Chromebook. You can use it with a Chromebook or a PC or a, or a Mac. But really the artificial intelligence is really based on the browser extension. Yeah. Right. So that's where the voice, the voice activation lies. Right? Makes sense. Makes sense. So that is contingent upon Google. Um, anything else that's not a Google based product, you would control with with the air mouse the same way you would with your desktop. Yeah, no, that's the reason why I asked at the moment we're Google school. So in terms of yeah. uh, in the prep school, so years uh, three to six, we are using Google Drive, Google Classroom. And um, that's that's all great for that in the upper side of the school where we've got Microsoft environments, we're looking at Office 365. And so what I'm, what I'm hearing is it probably it wouldn't work with that. It's not integrated with um, the Office 365 suite. No, no, not yet. That is that is that is on the roadmap. Uh, we started. With Google roadmap, for a okay. Yeah, but we started for a very logical reason with Google because that's about eighty, approximately 80 percent of teachers. That's kind of the world the world that they live in. And I'll tell you just a little bit about how we developed the product, right? So when we started this three and a half years ago. Now there were all sorts of other things that we were trying to solve, and after we interviewed about a thousand teachers. They said, please don't give us any more content. Please don't give us a new software tool. Give us something that allows us to maximize what we have. Yeah. Like and that. that's why we went to a Google first platform, right? It was really taking advantage of the fact that so much of what teachers do, at least what we've observed in the 50, now the 74 pilots we run plus the thousand plus interviews we did was most teachers live in Google right for uh, for their web search they live they live in youtube and they leverage google drive and if you could find a way for teachers to work through that seamlessly that's solving a massive problem and our goal was to solve a problem and not to create another layer of complexity yeah i mean i like that yeah i mean we've been using google for the last few years now and um sometimes drives aren't as organized as they should be like people's folders and files oh sure <laughs> and to have the ability to just say oh pick up that um, presentation on um, um e-commerce so that you know that's, that's yeah. interactive and is it a seamless experience well, i've not seen a demo ian as you said claire oh. our head teacher went to, i think it must have been claire's court she saw it she was very impressed with what she saw but she actually saw it at the uh, ISA's uh, uh, autumn um, sort of study conference up in uh, Coventry, uh, AJ. Um, yes. So it, it was just in the in the foyer there. Uh, but uh, Maria, do you want to just uh, sort of jump in because obviously <clears throat> you're uh, using Merlin Mind uh, um, quite often uh, to uh, to just open um, sort of files that that maybe you hadn't planned to use in in that that day. Um, so do you want to just uh, um, sort of um, explain to uh, AJ how you're um, sort of using uh, your voice basically just to find stuff and open it? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I've learned to change the names of files and folders so that they are kind of, you know, easily identifiable, something quite short and sharp that you actually say it and, it, you know, Merlin identifies straight away. Uh, Merlin's actually managed to find things on my drive that I haven't seen for years. <laughs> so um, I happened to say something the day, and these things popped up, and I thought, oh, I forgot I even had those resources, which is amazing because now I can use them again. I just assumed they were like lost forever. 
so yeah, I do I do use it to open a, a lot of things, especially if you know we're near the computer. If the students say, "Well, have you got such and such?" and you you can find it, you can access it straight away. Yeah. No, that's that's great. Thanks, Maria. And I, I think AJ, one of the um, one of the things that um, uh, again, just uh, sort of rolling back, um, the whole of the technology stack. Uh, behind um, sort of Merlin uh, Mind, uh, which, which encompasses a lot of um, AJI sort of uh, technologies on uh, on chipsets in the uh, in the actual machine, and a lot of uh, far field uh, microphones um, sort of in the uh, in the device as well. Is it comes from about um, ten years of research uh, by the uh, IBM Watson uh, Education Group. Um, where they were really looking at how um, the use of uh, AI could um, impact um, the, the the process of uh, of teaching and learning, and, and despite a huge amount of um, energy and uh, um, activity there, what they actually concluded was that um, AI um, is uh, much better suited um, in this particular. Um, sort of sector of our uh, lives uh, to actually assist um, the the human uh, being and not to try to replace uh, the, the 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 sort of uh, teacher in the uh, in the classroom um, and I, I think what you see uh, when you read sort of um, across uh, the the various um, uh, news outlets that there's a quite a lot of um, um, evidence of uh, growing evidence of the use of AI to actually support people in their jobs to allow them to make um, sort of better um, sort of decisions uh, in in whatever field they uh, they are so uh, so I think uh, right now it's very much uh, early days in the use of um, of AI and voice to control the technology and I think the other thing that uh, again Marie I'm sure you would talk to there is a deep integration to certain applications which have uh, more open um, sort of APIs. Um, and then there's a, a, a more light touch um, sort of uh, integration. And uh, and Jason or, or Zach, maybe we could explain the difference between uh, how you might control um, um, access to um, um, sort of YouTube and the things that you can do, but then how you might control some of the newer applications like uh, Kahoot or uh, or, or these things where you can literally open them on the screen, but right now, until that deeper integration, you can't dive straight into your uh, your resource. Uh, Zach, do you want to uh, talk to uh, to that one? Yeah. So um, essentially, for anything that your voice commands are not opening up and you're not getting such the results that you're working on, your best friend will be your your air mouse. So every every classroom, every device um, comes with uh, a remote control, which has a cursor that you can use from anywhere in the classroom, be able to um, to go around and select and click and, and click anything. So if there's a URL or a button you want to click, all you need to do is take this remote, and you can control it just like you're using a mouse on your computer. You can be doing this from anywhere in the classroom. Yeah, no, that that's, uh, that's that's great. Thank you for that, Zach. So, AJ, when we do lots of uh, demonstrations, uh, we we use um, uh, a sort of um, a Google slide deck uh, called Oceans, and uh, we can simply say, um, "Hey, Merlin, um, open uh, my uh, presentation uh, about uh, Oceans," and it literally, even though it's not uh, sort of on my uh, computer, not even uh, open on the uh, on the browser, uh, then it will go find it in Google Drive, um, load it up, and open the presentation. Um, and then I could say uh, present uh, uh, sort of um, slides. <clears throat> it will present them. I could say uh, go to slide three. Uh, it would move that. Um, I could say open the link. Uh, which might be a link to a, a, a video. Um, I could then say um, uh, sort of um, uh, move forward uh, to uh, two minutes, um, stop and play 30 seconds. Um, and so you can see <clears throat> how in a normal circumstance, um, I would have to um, make multiple um, sort of uh, use of the, the the keyboard or mouse to get to that point yeah. in that video. Um, and uh, I've done that while still being 
can sort of engage supporting a student somewhere in the classroom um, and I've been able to uh, to, to get uh, the rest of the students um, sort of moving on. Ironically, in a sort of inverse sense, uh, when we were uh, talking with uh, Alicia at the, at the primary school, um, she was uh, saying that I might have a, um, a student, uh, you know, of all the students I've got in the class, and they are <coughs> struggling uh, with uh, the difference between uh, the letter B and the letter D. Okay, so obviously they're a, a young uh, student, but rather than uh, almost ignore them as an individual student and their needs, um, I have prepared, or somebody's prepared, a 30 second uh, video on how to tell the difference between the, uh, the B and the D. Okay, and so what I want, and I'll pick on, on Paul, is Paul, I'd like you to uh, go and listen to Merlin Mine, and Merlin Mine is going to uh, show you uh, what the difference is between B and D, um, and I'll just say, hey Merlin, um, uh, play my video on, uh, on B and D, okay? So, so Paul is now at the front of the class watching the video, whereas I'm with the rest of the students carrying on doing what they need to do and you can again so whether, whether it's um, one individual or a small group um, you can uh, sort of um, maintain that engagement um, sort of uh, throughout and I think uh, the YouTube stuff uh, is a great example for other applications then I think of this like a long roadmap and Office 365 is one of those applications uh, that at some point I'm sure will have deeper um, um, sort of uh, integration, uh, but there are um, um, sort of uh, all the time new applications, and I think um, Zach or Jason is is Kahoot one of uh, the the applications where uh, you can literally um, dive in uh, more to uh, to to the the content within uh, Kahoot for quizzes. Jason, do you know? It is. It is. Yeah. Kahoot was one of the first uh, deeper integrations we did. Yeah, so, so AJ, hope, hopefully you get this, this idea of um, a deep integration into some applications that can be um, sort of, you can get right into the heart of them um, to get to the, the point of uh, teaching resources. For others, you can just open them uh, with, your, uh, with your voice. So uh, um, <clears throat> are there any other uh, questions at this stage? Marcus, I know you've been sat quietly there in, in Portugal. Um, AJ, yes. Great, thank you. Uh, two things, um, I can remember both that. One is the, um, how intuitive is it? And I haven't seen a demo, so I'd be really interested to see a demo, um, I think to Claire's course or whatever, if you've got a con contact that I, I can, you can link me in with. Um, but say for example, I ask Google to open up um, a presentation on e-commerce, but I've got three work, three week, three crap um, Google slides on it. Would it bring up all of them? And then, then I say, oh yes, can choose week one, or because I've forgotten. Yeah, I mean, an excellent uh, question. So, uh, um, Zach, do you or Jason, do you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll take that. So, uh, AJ, what would happen is if you had, let's say, three uh, three presentations about about e-commerce and they weren't differentiated at all, even one, two, three, what would happen is a is a menu would show up with three listed. And then you would simply say, you know, hey, Merlin, open number one or two or three. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. And my second question was, um, the AI, AI, I'm very interested in, what elements are AI examples at the moment? So, you know, so my understanding of AI is how it builds on and it becomes more intuitive because of the inputs it takes. So what element of, is AI in the Merlin mind? Again, uh, really good uh, question. So, uh, Jason, sorry, uh, I'll yeah. let you. No, it's so uh, you know there are really two things that I would that I would speak to with that. So the first is um, our language model is eighty percent native Google and twenty percent contextualized for uh, for the Ed space. And the second thing is that we have native Edge AI processing, which is basically part of the hardware. Now, what those two things together allow you to do is to really combine steps and save time when you think about it, right? So think about the complexity of the algorithm that allows you to pick out something directly from your Google Drive based on voice, for instance, right? So we're not doing anything predictive in the broader sense, right? We're really, we're really leveraging ASR 
and natural language processing as a first step to really do more intuitive AI moving forward. So I hope that helps. Yeah, thanks, Jason. And I think the other uh, aspect that I, I see um, sort of AJ uh, evolving over time is um, I notice um, that, um, you know, ex uh, for example, uh, every time on a Monday, you always open up um, a, a, a website uh, or a Google slide deck on e-commerce. Um, and um, somewhere through the lesson, you always go off and uh, look at uh, The Economist uh, website um, and you check on some other uh, bits of uh, material. Well, maybe um, sort of over time, uh, what um, uh, Merlin Mind may do, and I'm, I'm now just hypothesizing, is there's a pattern there of, um, of resources and activities uh, that, uh, that you're doing. And rather than you having to, uh, to sort of go find these resources, maybe I will uh, sort of recommend those um, sort of resources to you. And so the normal things that we associate, uh, don't we, with, uh, with, with pattern uh, recognition, um, I think that um, over time, there is a, an opportunity for Merlin to do that. But equally, right now, <clears throat> um, there are a, a huge range of um, uh, dialects of voice and uh, ways in which uh, people um, ask for the same information. So, uh, Paul, um, our uh, interesting conversation at the moment about um, um, English and opening presentations, uh, the difference between about and on? Um, yeah, I mean, that, Maria mentioned this earlier, it's about understanding the language that the device has. So um, if I was to say, you know, open my presentation on protect the oceans about it, it will do a search and Google find that things. I would then use the air mouse to select the one that I wanted. But if the device, if it wasn't open at all, I said open, my, search for my device, my slide presentation about then it will go straight to an opening so it just it allows you that shortcut rather than going to a search and then identifying which one you want so it's just yeah. it's about the precision of language but i think uh, as it grows and as it learns more then it will adapt to you know if there's a local phrase that that people use to search for then that will over time be included as it learns more and more i think yeah, and and uh, Maria, uh, one of the things, obviously, um, I, I can I can just um, when you got Merlin mind for the first time, and uh, you were uh, there, it is that nice uh, sort of grey um, sort of box plugged into your computer and the screen, and you're thinking, hmm, what am I supposed to ask uh, this? Um, can you just talk to that that sort of day one experience? Because yes, we do now provide you with some list of key voice instructions, but um, but how was your uh, um, first day using Merlin Mind? I think the first day it was all about just playing with the, the, the unit to get used to it, to get used to using that you're saying just then for the correct language and things to get the correct terminology. And as soon as you've got that, it's brilliant. My first day was um, doing Google searches on all sorts of things. <laughs> and then, um, and like I say, finding lost folders in my uh, Google Drive. So it's, you know, it's it is a case of I found for me, I learn by doing. So actually, playing with Merlin and and spending the time to to use it is just been more invaluable than kind of watching somebody else do it. Having yeah. a go myself, yeah. I think that's what I spent my first few days doing, playing with it myself. <laughs> oh, no, that, that that's oh, great. That, that's great. And, and, and AJ, does um, Maria's uh, sort of uh, answer help you with your uh, sort of day one uh, sort of question? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely does. Thank you. Okay, no, that's fine. Paul, you you had a question? <laughs> or were you just posting? Yeah, so Paul has uh, uh, posted in. I, I, yeah, sorry, Ian. Um, um, useful resources there, full list of commands, and just you know until you've got one type of play with it you're not necessarily going to be hugely useful but it does illustrate the breadth of commands that you can use to control the device if you scroll down um there's a there's a list of um commands two sets one long one short so it's, uh, it gives you a flavor of, of how broad its control already is and continues to grow so it will get bigger all the time <clears throat> no, that's fine. Thanks for that, Paul. Um, and uh, AJ, uh, from a from a next steps uh, point of view, um, then um, uh, Merlin Mind units 
um, are available for uh, free trial um, in uh, in schools. So uh, you do have the ability uh, to uh, simply request one um, sort of um, to be sent over the school. I know that, um, uh, yes, it's a, uh, the form uh, is at the bottom of the page that Paul has uh, just done. Um, I'm conscious that it is, um, uh, we're running out of um, time between now and, uh, and, and Christmas, uh, AJ, but um, uh, perhaps uh, we can uh, have a follow-up uh, call um, afterwards uh, just to see um, uh, how we can help next and answer any of the questions that you've got, okay? No, that's fabulous. Thank you, guys. And apologies, I was late. Uh, sincere apologies, running late uh, from uh, a previous lesson. Um, I've seen the link that Paul's just sent about requesting a, a trial unit. So I'll be going through that and probably for January, I think, with the next two weeks of Christmassy stuff, um, they won't be. <laughs> and and uh, tell Homegrange, uh, AJ, what's your uh, role in the school? Yeah, so yeah, my intro is, uh, so um, I'm the fancy title Director of Digital Strategy. So just trying to look at um, ways we can um, ensure that we meet our needs for pupils and parents and staff um, as we go through our digital revolution. So um, just ensuring that we um, can enable them and make teachers' lives easier, um, which is what I like with the, the angle that Merlin's come from is not to add, but to make it easier. Yeah, and, and I, I think that uh, what Maria's uh, shared um, and uh, the rest of the, uh, the the teachers, whether they're here in um, um, all different sets of schools and colleges and universities in the in the UK or the US, um, they they wouldn't be um, such uh, powerful advocates, AJ, if it wasn't uh, making a difference and making their lives easier, uh, as well as engaging their students. So uh, we look very forward to uh, uh, carrying on the conversation with uh, with you so yeah. zach um at, the, at this stage uh sort of uh, we've uh, we've been able to uh, share um quite a lot uh, thanks to uh, to maria and uh, and, and others um sort of uh, on the on the call um i know that one of the things that you're um, interested in are sort of the applications and experiences. Uh, do you want to uh, just uh, sort of touch on what you're most looking forward to uh, engaging with as a community over the coming sort of weeks and months? Yeah, so I mean, what I'm looking forward to the, to the most is just really myself connecting with teachers, but also just connecting teachers with other teachers and, and really creating this, this online community um, for, for teachers to share tips and ideas. And, and Maria, you were mentioning things that I, I wasn't even thinking of that a teacher can, can, can use Merlin for. And I think as we grow our teacher community, like I think that's going to be the power of our communities is teachers helping teachers um, and really utilizing Merlin for ways that I think even the folks who are creating Merlin didn't even think that we can use Merlin for. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, in the coming weeks, there's going to be a, a Facebook group officially launched um, where uh, teachers throughout the world can can join in and, and share tips and and we'll create ways for for teachers to connect with other teachers as well and um we'll also be a support center so if you have any questions or tips or any questions or having any bugs or anything coming up like you can ask questions and the merlin mind staff will also be there to say oh hey yeah that is a known issue or hey that that was fixed or this will be fixed tomorrow um so that will that'll be up and running very soon and we'll, we will definitely share that out with um every teacher that has a Merlin device um, as well. And um, really look forward to just building out a, a strong community um, and uh, look forward to having you all be part of it. Yeah, th thanks for that, uh, Zach. And and as uh, as everyone uh, knows, the, the power of sharing um, stuff uh, around uh, the, the sort of teaching uh, and education communities has no boundaries. Um, and uh, we've we've been able uh, to uh, sort of follow that philosophy uh, for uh, lots and lots of years, uh, successfully connecting some amazing teachers uh, all around the world. So uh, so that's good. And and Jason, uh, just before we uh, sort of uh, close today's uh, sort of session, uh, one of the things that I was uh, really intrigued with a with a conversation was um, how some schools who have 
some quite relatively old uh, technology, like um, sort of um, um, an energy. I'm sure you'll have seen this in some of your uh, perhaps other schools, uh, ceiling mounted VGA connected um, projectors. Um, they still apparently uh, exist in uh, some classrooms. Um, how you could use Merlin Mind to literally transform uh, those teaching spaces? Yeah, Ian, that's, uh, that's a really, really good point. So I always tell people that Merlin can make dumb tech smart and smart tech manageable. And uh, what, I, what I really mean by that is whether or not you're using something with a VGA connection, if you have a power Donegal, it will be just as effective as if you have a brand new HDMI input on, on interactive panel. Uh, we really try to create a product that meets people where they are. So whether or not you have an antiquated projector or a brand new BenQ, it really it really makes no no difference to us. Um, in terms of the hardware um, requirements as well, you know uh, we we have a lot of legacy compatibility, so you can go back pretty far with your kit, and you know we'll make it work. So that's something that really helps because in a lot of schools there's a purchase decision, right? Do I upgrade the front room display or do I really liberate the teacher? And the reality is that you can do both uh, because by uh, by virtue of, of you know, bringing this in, you have upgraded your screen because now everything on the screen you control by voice. And it's one more modality to liberate you. So uh, that's that's what I'll say about that for now. But if you have more specific questions about legacy tech or integrations, let me know because that's really the work that I do every day. Yeah, no, Jason, thank you very, very much for that. And hopefully I just wanted uh, to... Uh, uh, to bring that point out because uh, sometimes people think that they have to have a uh, quite uh, sophisticated infrastructure um, in their classrooms in order to um, sort of uh, layer on top uh, Merlin mind uh, but uh, as Jason has, uh, has quite rightly said uh, it can be applied to really bring forward um, sort of a, a much wider range of um of classroom um sort of infrastructure in that kind so uh, what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to bring uh today's uh sort of uh, uh monday uh, sort of uh, merlin mind session uh to a close if there are any other questions please now uh just uh use the uh, uh the raised hand and, and ask those um and uh if there aren't uh, then it's of course my uh a great uh, sort of pleasure to uh, thank um, sort of uh, Maria as always uh, to to join us from uh, from uh, colleague Cambria, uh, AJ Marcus. Uh, pleased that you could uh, join us uh, for today, and thank you very much, uh, AJ, for the for the for the questions. Uh, Jason and Zach, um, really looking forward to working with you and Zach. Um, the driving forward of the community. Uh, I'm sure is going to be so uh, powerful in uh, 2022 uh, that uh, let's uh, let's uh, look forward to uh, celebrating all the great ideas uh, that everybody is sharing. So uh, so with that, Paul, I think we will uh, stop the recording.